I'm Ben Parker, owner of Mini Cooper Experts in Glendora, California. And in this video tutorial, we're going to take the mystery out of the CVT transmission for the Mini Cooper. This is out of a 2003 Mini Cooper, regular Cooper, with a CVT transmission. To get started, we're going to take the 21 bolts out of the bell housing, and they're aligned all around the inside of the bell housing in here, as well as around the outside of the bell housing down around here. We're going to use a 3 8 drive snap-on impact with a 13 millimeter socket attached to it. You may have to bend this up out of the way or remove it. When you're all done you should have 21 of them on the side. So we're going to take this off. This is the shifter linkage. And now for the next step, we're going to go ahead and lay the transmission down, face down, and so we can get to the oil pan, remove the oil pan, the filter, and the valve body. So to start this, we have 13 10 millimeter bolts that hold the oil pan on. So we just go ahead and take those off. I'm just using a 10 millimeter socket on an impact, an electric impact gun. Then once the pan's off, I usually use it to catch all the parts that go inside the oil pan. The next step is we're going to remove the, the oil filter for the transmission, and that just pops right out. So the next step is we're going to remove the transmission valve body. And again, those are 10 millimeters, 10 millimeter bolts. We have four black ones on the left hand side here, and then uh, nine gold bolts. These bottom four always stay in because that'll actually separate the valve body. So we want to keep these bottom four that I'm pointing to right now in the valve body. You want to get a magnet and it should just slide straight out. You may have to adjust it a little bit to get it to slide out. Sometimes if the belt breaks, when it breaks it actually bends the shaft and you have to cut it to get it out. There we go. Should just slide right out. Just like that. So once that's out, try not to lay anything on this. This is a precision tube. It's got a little port for oil flow and things like that. So you don't want to set anything on it and bend it. If it is, there we go. Just set it on there like that. So we can pop the primary and secondary drum out. At this point, we're just going to put this half of the case on the floor and we'll get to that a little later. So now with the primary drum and the reason why we're doing this is because the seal in here is not sealing anymore. It's, just, it's falling straight down, which means it's bleeding pressure through. So how we're going to do that, we're going to put the nut back on the end so we don't mess up the threads at the end. Flip it up. Then we're going to take an air hammer and just there's three little notches in here. We're just going to air hammer it really quick. Boom, boom, boom. This nut will spin off. Once it's broken free, it should slide off with your fingers. And I always kind of like to make a note of about how far on the threads it is. So you want to see about one thread when it's all the way down. That way when we're reassembling it, we know how, how far it is, if it's down all the way or not. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. And what I like to do is get a little box or a bag to hold the second half in. Because what we're going to do is get a brass hammer and just hold this up and tap it with the hammer and it's going to separate that drum. So we're going to take the brass hammer, hold up the primary drum. My assistant's going to help me do that. We're just going to separate it. And that's it. We saw the little ball bearings fly everywhere. Try to catch as many as they can as we can. But you see there it holds six of them. And you can see that the, this bearing is pitted. And we're going to get into a little more diagnosis of the primary drum a little right now. Move on to the transmission oil pump. So the only time I've ever seen the transmission oil pump go bad is when the primary drum where it mounts or sets into the planetary gear set is rounded. And what that does is it causes the shaft to wobble inside the drum and eventually break. And like I said, that's the only time I've ever seen one of these pumps go bad. It's just a So now we're ready to install the primary drum. Again, just to make sure that we have a nice lip 
on the primary drum that we're going to put into the prime or the planetary gear set. Go ahead and set it down. We may have to rock it back and forth to get all the teeth to ground. But once it does, you should have about a quarter inch gap on from the top steel, and you should have about a sixteenth of an inch gap from the drum to the aluminum housing. At this point, we want to put our drive belt on our secondary drum and install them. So now we're ready ins to install the belt. And remember, we have our secondary drum prepped with the jaw, the three jaw puller pulling and expanding the secondary drum. I can't overemphasize enough to have the P-TOT tube in the neutral position. They have to shimmy the drums around a little bit. It looks like everything's, there is a bit of a trick to this because this torque ratio sensor has to be on the, a certain side of this lever on the valve body.